Welcome you back to the Patrick Netherton Show right here on 1130 The Tiger. He's Rogers, I'm Patrick, and we are pleased to welcome in one of the uh, participants in the Ruston Regional coming up this weekend. They will be taking on the host school, Louisiana Tech, coming up tomorrow. He is the head coach of the Ryder Bronx, Dr. Barry Davis, joining us. Coach, how are you? I'm doing fine. How are you doing? I'm great. Um, kind of walk me through the, the – the idea when you when you saw your name pop up, obviously you knew you were going to be in the tournament. Uh, give me some idea of, of kind of what you thought when you see. Okay, I got there's Louisiana Tech, NC State, um, uh, yourselves, Alabama. Kind of what did you think when you saw that pop up? Well, we we, we had been projected, you know, by all these uh, so-called experts where we were going to go. Uh, Knoxville was one. Eugene, Oregon was one. I uh, thought maybe East Carolina, you know, these are proximity, you know, places, although Oregon's not. But we thought, you know, we'd kind of ha- hang around on the East Coast uh, because of travel and, and, you know, that type of thing. But when uh, Louisiana Tech came up and then our name popped up, one, we were we were surprised. Uh, two, we were very excited because, you know, it's just exciting to see your name come up, in, in you know, nationally in front of everyone. And I think it's just uh, a new place. Uh and a great experience to, to go uh, to an area of a country that you've never been. Uh, I know how good Louisiana Tech is. Uh, they, I follow baseball pretty pretty closely, and I know they've been ranked, you know, for most of the year. So I, I knew that it was a uh, you know a great place to to go, a great program that we're going to compete against, and uh, all those things kind of run through your mind. And then of course you start turning your attention to how we're going to get there, and you know start preparing for the team, and you know that type of thing. All fun stuff, you know, very exciting. A lot, lot, lot of work to do uh, to get here, and then now once we're here, we're trying to enjoy everything around us and uh, and take it in. You know, you had a, a bit of an unusual route in that, for those of us that are in the South, you know, we're used to uh, the SEC tournament, right? It's, a, it's one single elimination game for the lower seeds, and then you're into the double elimination portion of the bracket. Uh, but the bracket in the Metro at, at, at Atlantic Athletic Conference is a little bit different. Kind of walk us through – the the you know best of three that gets you into the bracket to start right. with, and then kind of take us through how the, how that's a little bit of a different tournament. Well, the the season started you know it started differently you know different from from uh, for the MAC as, you know as opposed to any other conference. I think maybe the Big Ten uh, was very similar. We only played conference games. We did not play a game until March twentieth, which is unusual. I mean, normally we had played you know a month or five weeks. In advance, so we didn't play our first game until March 20th. We played four games on a weekend. Uh, I think probably two weekends into the season, the conference uh, administrators started to see there was going to be some inequities. Some teams weren't playing. Uh, Maris, for, for instance, did not play for literally a month, mm. and they, and they're a very good program. And uh, so I think they they put their heads together and came up with a plan. We eliminated the last weekend of the season. So we took a 40-game schedule and, and, and reduced it to a 36-game schedule. And what that did was it provided that extra week to play that first round to take a top eight instead of the top. Originally, this was designed to take a top four. So now the top eight, because of the inequities in the schedule now, you know, it, it gives the team, you know, a chance to get in the playoffs. So I thought that was a fair thing to do. And, and one of the odd things, and, and it really plays to our advantage, is the only tiebreaker was wins. It didn't matter how many losses you had. Mm-hmm. It was all based on wins. So if you look at our conference schedule, our conference record, we were 18 and 16. Some other teams had 17 wins, but they had better percentages because they played less games. They were kind of rewarded for playing games as opposed to punished for not, you know, playing, you know, not playing as many. Right. So, so we got in as the three seed, you know, based on, you know, 18 wins versus 17. But our percentage was certainly not top top three. It was like six. So that helped. So then the first re- round is every, you know one to eight, two to seven, three to six, four to five. Highest seeded winner gets to host. Well, you know Fairfield uh, was the host, and uh, the number two seed was uh, Monmouth, and we were the three, and then the number four seed Canisius. So it played out, you know, uh, as as people would say, chalk in one, two, three, four, and then of course we all went to Fairfield and played in our normal. 14 double elimination tournament that you know most people are familiar with which is what we'll play in this weekend it's interesting because obviously the the mac everyone has knows about fairfield right that's that they're kind of the story the they went undefeated for such a long time 
Um, and, and that's kind of the story everyone seems to know about. Uh, do, do you think that maybe people underappreciate the, the level of baseball that's in your league? Because obviously – uh, Canisius can play, Monmouth can play, you guys can play. Uh, the, you know, you obviously have teams that have the ability there. Um, do you think Fairfield maybe overshadowed everyone a bit this year? Well, I mean, we we went to play Fairfield uh, early early April. They were I don't know exactly what they were. They were undefeated. Um, we we were ten and four and feeling pretty good about ourselves. And I think there was something like sixteen and 0, 18 and zero. Uh, and, and very, and, and very quickly we could see that they were, uh, an elite program or elite team in our league. I mean, you, the pitching was there, the hitting was there, they had their solid defensively. I just felt like they were very good in, in all phases. Now, do they compare? Does the MAC compare to the ACC? Does it, you know, the Big 12, the Pac 12, the SEC? No. We don't have the, the resources. We don't have the depth. Uh, we do have good players. Uh, you know, do we have enough to compete on a national level? On occasion. I can't say that every year, but I will say this, that all of our teams do play competitive schedules early in the season, February, March, and there's, it, it does not surprise me when a team, you know, defeats a, or a major power five. Let me last year, Niagara, who finished sixth in our league this year, last year in the COVID year, they, they're for our opener. I mean, and you got to think now. Niagara's in Niagara Falls, New York. Mm-hmm. They beat they beat Florida State and won nothing the first game. So, I mean, it's one game. You know, Florida State certainly took care of business the next two games. But my point is, you know, on any single day, any one day, uh, the MAC level pitchers can compete uh, with with the bigger schools. Um, we just don't have it. The margin of error is a little smaller. You know, we can't we can't throw two balls away, walk three guys, you know, strike out 12 times. We can't do that consistently and, and be able to match up. I think that's where the that's where the uh, inequities come or, or the difference uh, in, in conferences. But the Mac is a good league. It's getting better. It's been I've been in it 17 years. It's much better now than what it was when I first started. Mm-hmm. So I feel comfortable that, you know, Fairfield will will represent really well. And uh, I'm hoping we will, too. Talking to uh, Ryder Bronk head coach uh, Barry Davis, I, I'm I'm curious for you know, I, I mentioned you know we're here in the South, right? So we're used to LSU baseball, Louisiana Tech, Northwestern State, McNeese, all of these schools down here in Louisiana, and and we're used to seeing Northern teams and Midwest teams travel to the South for early season home oh. action. I'm curious when you set up a schedule because of you're playing a spring sport up in the Northeast, you're in New Jersey. Tell me about setting up a schedule in the early going, knowing that you're not going to have a, necessarily a lot of outdoor practice days early on, and that's the reason why a lot of your teams travel to the South to get early games in. Well, I think the, well, the, my philosophy has always been, you know, play the best team that you can, you know, to prepare yourself for your conference season. Don't get too enamored or too upset over your overall record at the beginning of the season. Um, uh, and when I first began at Ryder, I thought it was important for us to get wins. You know, it didn't matter who we were playing. Try to schedule properly where we could get some, I wouldn't say easy wins, but games and programs that we knew we could compete with right. at the level of talent that we had. So in 2006, seven, I mean, in 2007, we defeated, uh, Washington State, which, was, which was a big win for us. So you start putting those types of wins together. 2008, you know, we started to schedule some. We had some week. Let's put it this way: we played a weaker team early, and we get off to a four and zero start. And I think that was important for our guys to build confidence to show that you know in the recruiting base that hey, we we have a good record. But as we got better, we started to schedule better. And then if you go back and look at our history, you'll see pockets of years where we'll go play an SEC or an ACC school. Uh, 2010, 2011, 2013, we went to South Carolina. Uh, you know, 2015, we played Virginia Tech. We played Campbell. We played St. John's, Kent State, Duke. You know, we put those, we knew what the level of team we had. So we kind of, we sort of, I say sort of, we scheduled intentionally based on what we thought we would have. 
you know, uh, we have a quality club, I think, now that can compete. So next year we'll play Virginia. We'll play Wake Forest. You know, they'll be on our schedule. Oklahoma in two years. Uh, but you don't have a very good schedule. You don't have enough schedule. Don't have a very good a deep team or a young team. Then you have to schedule appropriately. Mm-hmm. But the best competition, you play the best teams, the better best best teams that you can, the, the tougher teams, and also the environment. This is one of the disadvantages we have this weekend. I think normally we played early in February and March against the tougher component opponent that maybe has a bigger stadium that maybe has a big crowd mm-hmm. uh we haven't done that this is our first non-conference game yeah of, of the year but to answer your question is i think you schedule the the, the the opponents that you think will get your team ready to play uh in the conference and um and that, and that's what we try to do so and we also try to schedule based on what we think will be we certainly don't want to go and play power fives week in and week out if we don't have a team that can compete that's not going to do you any good you want to be in games that you can compete in uh so it's always good to have maybe one or two of those on there yeah but don't overdo it don't overdo it and uh, put yourself you know get your kids thinking they can't win uh but so it's a, it's a kind of a balancing act. You got to take it year to year, but with the the, pro- the problem is you got to do these things two, three, four years in advance. Yeah. But sometimes you got to you got to guess right, and uh, if you do a long weekend, yeah, uh, for your for your for your programs because not I mean I, I can't speak for every uh, MAC program, but the majority of them are not fully funded. Um, you know we're not we're not fully staffed, right? You know that type of thing. Yeah, I mean that's that's one of the the biggest issues in in college baseball right now is scholarships and and getting that that you know neck that last full-time assistant i mean we that that's a bigger issue in in the world of college baseball at large right um i'm curious scouting then you mentioned hadn't been in that environment and, and the love shack has been rocking the last several uh, weeks and and the crowds have certainly turned up uh, and there's going to be a nice crowd out there, and they're going to be loud. How do you then go about preparing your team, not just for the the environment, but also for Louisiana Tech, a team that you guys have not seen before? Well, one of the one of the advantages we have now, and we didn't have, uh, you know, maybe even for us last year or two years ago, is there's the scouting service called Synergy. So we're able to watch every pitch that Louisiana Tech has thrown, every swing that they've taken. You know, you really don't get to see how they play necessarily. Although I have watched them on TV, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I did see. I watched a little bit of the uh, tournament last weekend, not, and only because as a fan, you know, I was watching. Sure. Not necessarily thinking, okay, we're going to go to Louisiana right, Tech. Right. You had no idea. Here. Probably, probably if I'd have known, I might have watched a little closer. <laughs> uh, yeah. But, um, but, it, but my point is, is that you know, you, you got a beautiful stadium. Uh, we do have some older guys. We don't have a lot of older guys. We have a lot of what we could call COVID freshmen. Yeah, you know they're in, they're they're listed as sophomores, but really they haven't played but about fifty games. Yeah, you know fifty five games. So, but we do have some older guys that have been in this atmosphere before. Uh, you know, even if it was three or four years ago, uh, I think we'll 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 be excited to play in front of a crowd. Uh, I don't think we'll be intimidated. I think the question is, do we need to go out and play baseball properly, fundamentals, and, and be tough and understand, you know, we need to raise our level uh, to their level as best we can. And I think you just feed off of the atmosphere as kind of a motivational thing and, and to be excited because we don't get this opportunity every year like some of the schools, like like an Alabama or an NC State, right. they, you know, may make a regional two out of every you know, three years or one out of every three, something like that. Even Louisiana Tech, you know, they, they, they've come a long way. In the, I say the last 10 years, you can certainly answer that better than sure. me. But uh, as a fan, and I, I know that they, they've gotten better and better each year. Well, tell me, for those those that are going over to Ruston, and we'll have several over here in Shreveport that are heading that way as well, and uh, you know they're in our listening area, tell us uh, tell us about this team, who you have, what, what guys do we need to be looking out for, and – and, uh, you know, what is, is Bronx baseball when it shows up in Ruston? Well, I, I think, what, you know, you're, you're probably going to – people, when they come out and watch, they, they may not be overly impressed, I think, uh, with the physical size of our guys. We're not a big team mm-hmm. in sense, like, you know, 6'2", you know, whatever. We have a couple guys like that. But 
you know, I think uh, we're athletic. Uh, I think I think we're fundamental. Uh, I, I think we will do our best to put the ball in play. Uh, you know, we, 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 we probably lately more or less bunt, move the ball around, play a little small ball type uh, philosophy. Uh, our first two pitchers that will pitch this weekend that we know will pitch have been our horses. They've done so their two left-handers. Uh, they've, they've been our one and two, um, and, and both can, can pitch, I think. They'll pitch. Uh, we're not going to be 92, 93, not, nothing like that. It's going to be, you know, mid-upper 80s uh, with some pitchability. Uh, I think uh, just like any college program, you start getting into the bullpen and start to test your depth. That's where we, that's where we may be uh, a little light, but uh, you know, it's just a, that's what you're going to see. I think you'll see guys that'll hustle and guys that'll play hard. And uh, you know, man for man, we probably aren't as talented as the other three teams, but that's okay. There's Fairfield was better than us too. Uh, and you I beat thought. them. And uh, anything can happen. Play, you know, go out. Throw strike one if you can. Keep ball down. Uh, stay in it long, long as you can, and then uh, we'll think some. Coach, uh, one last thing before we let you go. Uh, I was I call games from Northwestern State uh, here in Louisiana, and we were in the 05 regional in Baton Rouge, and Marist was one of the teams that were in our region. Um, now that weekend it was brutally hot. I mean, uh, heat index 102, 103, and Marist brought their wool uniforms. Um, so what, yeah. I'm, what I'm hoping is that you guys either don't have a set of wool uniforms or didn't bring them to Ruston this weekend. I just I just wanted to pass no. that advice along to you. <laughs> no, we'll wear a red jersey, but it is a really light jersey. Uh, although my game two pitcher, for some reason, likes to wear a black top. So, you know, I don't think he's going to change from that. But uh, we'll uh, – We'll be we'll be okay. We'll be okay. Matter of fact, the first game we played in the MAC tournament, I believe that the humidity was in the ninety percent range. Ooh. It was about ninety two degrees. Uh, got cooler the next day, but that particular day was warm. So um, I think I, I don't know if that'll affect us, but the turf does make a difference. Yeah, the turf does make a difference. It does warm you up, and uh, so I think that's one of the issues that we'll 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 deal with. We tried to explain to them to hydrate, you know all week and, and be prepared for that uh, and just, you know, do all the little things really well, and and, uh, and I think we'll be okay. Well, Coach, congratulations on uh, making the tournament. Welcome to Louisiana. If you need any food recommendations, hit me up. I got you taken care of. Uh, otherwise, right. y'all have a great time, and, uh, man, I hope y'all go out there and win the whole thing. That'd be a heck of a lot of fun. Well, that would be fun. We're looking forward to getting out on the field and competing with these top programs like Louisiana State, NC State in Alabama. So we're, we're looking forward to it. Coach, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank uh, you for having me. All right. Barry Davis, the head coach of the Ryder Bronx, who will be taking on Louisiana.